Yeah. Okay, I'm so we're going ready. So we are recording, just in case. All right, what's up, everybody? We are live from the Land of Fitness Dungeon. I'm Sean Land, and this is Joy Bonner, my lovely uh, assistant slash fiance. Um, so today we're going to talk about the ketogenic diet. All right. So it's uh, a diet that I get asked about a lot. We're big keto dieters, right? That's right. We're a part of the, the fad. There be some of you guys at home are like, oh, great, not more keto. But yeah, the reason we're going to go over today is because it's a really misunderstood diet. I get asked about it a lot. And some of the questions I get asked show me how much people don't really understand it. So we're going to go over some frequently asked questions about the ketogenic diet. All right, so we're gonna go over it really quick. What is the ketogenic diet? The ketogenic diet actually refers to a process that takes, um, that, that occurs in the brain. So if I were to explain this like really simple, all right, if I was to explain this to like, a, like an eighth grader, okay? When your, so you basically when you, to your, your body, your brain uses glucose, all right, it uses sugars for energy, it loves sugars, all right? So in fact, it's addicted to sugars, all right? It's like completely addicted to sugars. So like, like crack, all right? Good work, awesome job, babe. Killing it already. So we're, <laughs> so um, it's addicted to sugar. So when you take away glucose or take away sugars, you take away carbohydrates, the brain has to find another way to, to for, it has to find another energy source. So what your brain does is it turns, turns fat, all right, into ketones and we use that for energy. The great thing about your body, your body has a ton of fat on it. No matter how lean you are, everyone's body has a ton of fat on it. So you have a surplus of energy to use. So what happens is, when you ketogenic diet, you take away carbohydrates, your brain then turns fats into ketones, you use that for energy, you start burning your own body fat. All right, so that's what's so great about the ketogenic diet. You start burning, you're using your own body fat for fuel, all right? So, it's really popular because it takes away bloat, all right, you, um, you need a certain amount of water in your body to digest carbohydrates. So when you no longer have carbohydrates to digest, your body gets rid of the excess water that you have and you'll lose some water weight. So a lot of women especially love the ketogenic diet because you feel bloated a lot, you're walking around the first two weeks of keto, you lose all that water, you're gonna feel light, you feel tight, you feel good, all right? So that's one of the, one of the first perks about the ketogenic diet, it gets rid of that bloat because you no longer need excess water in your body to digest these carbohydrates. Um, so it takes you about three days to get into ketosis. It takes about 72 hours. Some people take longer. I've read some places, some people have got into it quicker, but the average is like about 72 hours to get into ketosis. What's funny about that, so going back to crack, going back to crack is, uh, what's funny about that is it takes about three days for your brain to break an opioid addiction. All right, so it takes three full days for your brain to kick an opioid addiction, just like it takes your brain to kick that sugar addiction. So that's why we have our little joke up there. It's like crack, okay? so. Who is keto for? Who would consider doing the keto diet? Well, the, who would consider doing the keto diet would be anyone who wants to lose body fat. So number one, it's a really great diet for losing a large amount of body fat. So if you're trying to get lean, that's why we like it. Summertime, we always start our keto kick up. All right, we're using our bacon, we're using our healthy fats. So you see us posting a lot and talking a lot about keto and we're probably obnoxious with it, but that's just something that works really well for us. We're able to shred a lot of fat on the keto diet. All right. The other, uh, the other so if you're a diabetic, all right, it helps keto because you're not introducing sugars, you're not introducing carbohydrates. Your blood glucose levels are maintained. All right, you're not you're not doing things that are spiking your insulin and lowering it and all these other things. So it works really well with anyone who is diabetic or maybe if you're close to diabetes, a ketogenic diet is great for you. The other is anyone who has a lot of inflammation. So that could be a lot of things, all right? A lot of your doctors will tell you to eat a low inflammatory diet. Carbohydrates are highly inflammatory. So that's not something that you want. I mean, if you're introducing, if you're eating carbs all the time, you're really inflaming the body. Now, if you're someone who has arthritis or any joint issues, it's gonna be great because once this, once I said, or once again, take away the carbohydrates, you lower the inflammation, you're not gonna have as much pain. So those, those are three people that keto is perfect for. In fact, if you, if you fall in those three categories, I, see, I don't know why you would eat anything but ketogenic. Um, it's also good for psychiatric conditions. They've, they've seen if, you're, if you eat keto, all right, you are, it's better, it helps um, lower anxiety, it helps lower stress, all right, you're getting control of your cortisol levels. Um, the other thing too, I, what, here's the main reason why I do keto, is not just to get super ripped. I have extremely demanding schedule, keto, um, when you're eating, a, when you're fat adapter, you're eating a high fat diet, you get really sharp. You get this great mental clarity. When you wake up in the morning, you're ready to go. Joy knows 
right? When I wake up in the morning, I'm like, good morning, babe. How's it going? Let's do this today. All right. It makes me very pleasant to be around in the morning. Um, so if you're someone who has a really high demanding schedule, you got to be sharp. You got to be on, you need your vocabulary working. All right. I would suggest the ketogenic diet carbs. If you ever eat a lot of carbs, all right? If you went to the state fair and you eat a whole funnel cake, you wake up in the morning, you feel almost hungover. Carbohydrates make your brain feel fuzzy. Whereas fats do not. All right. If you're eating good, healthy fats, you're going to wake up. You're going to feel sharp. You're going to be ready to seize the carp, seize the day. All right. It lowers blood pressure as well. If you're someone who's high blood pressure, I highly recommend the ketogenic diet. It has done wonders with people with their blood pressure. So I highly would recommend ketogenic diet if you have high blood pressure. And then finally, um, it's because you're eating so much fat, um, it reduces inflammation. So acne, psoriasis, dandruff, all right? Brush your shoulder off. Because you're not gonna have dandruff if you're eating keto. You're eating a lot of central fatty acids. Fats are good for your hair, your skin, your nails. Also, it's gonna be lowering that inflammation because you're not eating highly inflammatory carbs. So if you're someone who struggles with acne, psoriasis, plaque psoriasis, like hardcore bad stuff, dandruff, anything like that, it's gonna make your hair, your skin, your nails nicer, and you're not gonna have those little white flakes on your shoulders, okay? Now, you have a lot of, this is a, probably one of the biggest questions I get. What is keto compared to a low-carb diet, all right? I've done bodybuilding shows, or, I've, or you know, low-carb, low-carb, low-carb. Carbs are the enemy. So you hear about all this stuff about low-carb diets. What's the difference? So, and then a lot of, someone said to me yesterday, yeah, keto, it's just basically a low-carb diet, right? No, not at all. Here's the main reason, okay? The number one reason between keto and just low-carb is how you feel, all right? When you eat a lot of fats, you feel good. When you go low-carb, you don't have fats, so let's say, let's say this, what are our three energy sources? Our three energy sources are fat is the best, carbs are the second, and then protein is the third. So if you're not eating very many fats, or medium fats, or just not enough fats, you're eating low carbs, you're relying on protein to, for your energy source. Protein is a really crappy energy source, all right? It's good for building muscle, it's not great for energy. All right, so if you are eating a low carb diet, you're not gonna feel very good. You're going to feel like poop. All right, you're not gonna feel good at all. All right, keto diet, when you're upping those fats, your brain has that surplus of energy to use, you're gonna feel good, you're gonna feel sharp. So it's a more sustainable diet. What I mean by that is you can do it more long-term happily. You cannot do a, long, a low carb diet for a long period of time without feeling like crap. It's going to hurt your performance in the gym. It's gonna probably hurt your performance at work because you're not gonna be sharp, you're gonna be carb tarted, is what some people call it. Um, so that's not something that you want. So if you do a crash low carb diet, you've had success with it, you will lose weight, but it's not sustainable. So I would recommend looking into the ketogenic diet. I'm not saying low carb diets don't work. They definitely do. I just don't believe them to be as sustainable as a ketogenic diet. So that's something that you want to consider if you're going low carb. All right. And the other thing too is number one thing about diets is what we all fail them. We fail diets. The reason, how many times have you started a diet and you didn't complete it? How many times have you paid for a diet and you just, meh, you just fell off. The reason low carb diets don't work is because you go low carb until you feel like crap and you're like, mm, chocolate cake sounds good. I've had a shitty day. Chocolate cake will really make my day better. All right. Or chocolate milk in Joy's case. <laughs> so it doesn't set you up for success. You need to have diets that you understand that are organized and set you up for success and low carb diets. Lots of times, I promise you the first time you have a little booze or the first time you have a crappy day, you're already feeling like crap. You're going to be like, screw it. Pizza time. All right. So that's, you know, they, that's, just, that's another thing. It sets you up for more success to keep those fats high. You're gonna feel better. You're gonna do better on your diet. All right, next is, the, oh, this is a huge question, is keto versus Atkins. What's the difference? Isn't Atkins a ketogenic diet? Yes, it is, all right? Atkins and keto are very similar. The biggest thing why Atkins diets are, why the ketogenic diet is better than Atkins, even though they are so similar, is because it's more organized. So Atkins, Dr. Atkins, if you read any of his materials, he actually was a very, very, really sharp guy. He really pushed that big Atkins movement, but it was very disorganized. He basically said, in more or less, that you can eat as much meat as you want. You can spend the whole day eating bacon. You could do this, you did, you know, he did push vegetables and things like that, but he basically said that you could eat just steak for every meal and that would work. You could put heavy cream on everything. Well, it's about the quality of your fats. So keto is just a more organized, more, um, um, sophisticated version of Atkins. So that's why so many people had, had a great, um, had a, had a lot of great results with Atkins. I feel like there was a lot of people that rebounded and then fell off it. And now you don't hear about it quite as much, probably because keto is just the better looking cousin of Atkins. Um, 
So in Atkins diet, like I said, they was like, eat a bunch of bacon, eat a bunch of steak, eat a bunch of this. So that's okay. We eat all that stuff on keto, but it's all saturated fat. Saturated fat is not great for you compared to some of the other fats. It's not as bad as we always thought it was, but it, it's, it's out of all the other fats that you could be eating, all right, you don't wanna just only eat saturated. You will run into some health issues if you're only eating saturated fat. That and it, those uh, animal products that are always, um, just have tons of saturated fat, they're gonna be higher in a lot of other things too. You know, it, sodium, I don't believe that you can have too much sodium if you're eating a healthy balanced diet because you're, you're, you know, you're gonna balance it out with the other macro and micronutrients, but a lot of people aren't gonna be eating that way commonly on the Atkins, so they're gonna be sodiums through the roof, they're gonna have hypertension, and there's just a lot of stuff that can go wrong with Atkins if you're not more organized. So the keto diet, you're gonna hear stuff like medium chain triglycerides, all right, monounsaturated fats, and of course my favorite are essential fatty acids, all right, essential fatty acids. Acids, that's a sen babe, really? Acids. <laughs> Not fatty acids, all right? <laughs> that's what essential fatty acid looks like. <laughs> so anyway, so that's gonna be like from fish, all right, you wanna get those omegas up, high omegas in that diet, omegas do wonders for you. EFAs are extremely important, so if you're gonna eat a ketogenic, a high fat diet, I su suggest MCTs like from your coconut oils, all right, EFAs from like your fish, uh, monounsaturated from like your avocados, things like that. That's gonna make you healthier. You're using better energy sources and you're not gonna run into some of the health issues that you're running into with Atkins. So is Atkins bad? No, it's obsolete, all right? It's like Windows 98 and then we got freaking Google Chrome here or whatever you wanna compare it to, okay? Now, the other thing too, do you eat veggies on, on a keto diet? People ask me that all the time because so, a lot of people don't do veggies on a keto diet. I have no idea why you would ever do that. Vegetables are extremely important. Veggies give you that alkaline acid balance in your body, all right? So you have to have vegetables no matter the diet. That's why I don't particularly agree with the carnivore diet. That's a big, really popular diet. Anything Joe Rogan gets behind, like flies. So the carnivore diet, it's, you know, they basically try to show that you can survive on, on meats and it's totally fine. That's true, but I don't know what a lot of these carnivore eaters are doing to, um, to offset that acid balance, all right? They're getting the, their body, the food they're eating is gonna make them really acidic. And let's say have some secret I'm just having, a, uh, not sure of, but the carnivore diet, if you're only eating meats, all right, or if you think that you can get away with only eating meats, it's not a good idea. You're gonna wanna eat, uh, uh, our, our favorite ones are gonna be like green beans, Brussels sprouts, asparagus. Um, that's gonna be stuff that you like a lot on keto. Um, it's gonna help offset this acidity. You gotta have vegetables, guys. If you're eating any diet that doesn't have vegetables in it, it's probably not very complete. So remember that. Get your veggies in, especially my bodybuilder guys out there that just eat meat, potatoes, meat, potatoes, meat, potatoes. Even if you're not doing a keto diet, get some veggies in there, man. You're gonna need it to live, all right? So can you have carbs at all on the keto diet? I don't wanna do a diet where I'm just strict. I just have to be married to the diet. I'm not gonna have any fun. Well, I'm gonna tell you about the fun parts about keto where you can still have fun um, is your cheat meals, all right? Cheat meals, yes. This is, we're, we're actually condoning cheating, all right? Not in your personal relationships, but with your meals. It's good to cheat occasionally, all right? The reason it's good to cheat, it's gonna, um, your ins it's gonna kinda switch that insulin sensitivity, it's gonna get you working and get that metabolism working again. If you do straight keto all the time, you will run into snags, you, I feel like you will plateau. I think it is good to get a cheat meal in. If you're gonna cheat, I, re I recommend low glycemic index carbohydrates. That's the best thing to do is eat low glycemic index carbohydrates, low inflammatory carbohydrates. That doesn't mean that you can't have pizza if you wanna cheat, that doesn't mean that you can't have a, ice, you know, a sundae, but you have a better chance of having carbs and staying in ketosis if you just have one good cheat meal. All right, I have a little bit of, I'll have a Chipotle rice bowl. It feels so good to get some rice in me. It's gonna help reset that insulin sensitivity. If you go harder, it could possibly kick you out of keto, but then you know you just gotta spend three days getting back into it and you'll be back burning fat again. So it's not that you can never have carbs, but it makes you gives you something to look forward to. All right, you pick your cheat day out with your wife, your girlfriend, your fiance. We go, we have our, we have our, our kind of our go-tos with our cheat meals. With Joy, it's usually something chocolatey. All right, with me, it's usually something starchy but you wanna try your best. If you keep it happy, or if you keep it healthy, you will remain in ketosis. You don't need to start that process over again. If you go a little wild, if you go really, you know, the main thing is just keep it small. The other thing, all right, oh God, so those, this is for apparently the most important thing to everybody out here. Can you drink on keto? Yes, you can drink on keto, all right? Shot, 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 all right? 
You can drink on keto, but same thing. You don't want to drink too much because it, you're, here's what happens with your liver. Your liver is a master prioritizer. It prioritizes everything in your body. Everything your liver breaks down, it goes onto like a priorities list. Well, when you put alcohol in there, that becomes the top priority. So you're not breaking down other things that the liver's not working on other things it should be working on. So this doesn't mean you should be drinking all the time. Like, yeah, Sean said I could just drink as much as I want to keto. Yeah, I'm just, as long as it's just keto, I'm good. Yeah, no, you don't want to do that. So I recommend if you're someone who drinks socially once a week or something like that, Tequila is our favorite, right? Tequila, all right? We like tequila. We do, we do shots, shots, shots of tequila. We don't do any mixers. You don't want to mix it with anything. I, re I recommend do shots of tequila, all right? The reason I do shots of tequila is you get two, two shots in you. If you've been keto all week, it's going to hit you pretty good. You're going to be feeling pretty good. You'll be social, but you're not drunk. Um, I would recommend getting drunk, all right? All right? I mean, don't, don't just like go get wasted if you're taking a diet serious, all right? You have to take all these diets very serious. But if you have to, if you have a work meeting, all right, you want to be like, all right, I want to, I'm gonna have a shot of tequila, kind of loosen up. Vodka, whiskey is another no carbohydrate thing. But I like, I, I say, I recommend staying with the clear stuff. You can get away with drinking some light wines. I think that's fooey though. Just stay with zeros, all right? You wanna go zeros. There's carbs hidden in everything. Don't hide them in your alcohols. So it, can you drink on the keto diet? Yes, I wouldn't recommend it all the time. But if you have to, I'd say do some shots of tequila and you are good. All right, oh, then this is the last question. Some people are worried about constipation, all right? They're worried about constipation on the keto diet, all right? Well, you can get constipated on any diet, but with keto, when you're eating a lot of nuts, you're eating a lot of cheese, um, eating a lot of fat in general, yes, that can happen. But if you are doing a lot of probiotics, you're doing a lot of fibers, or you're, um, you're ingesting a lot of enzymes, you won't run into these issues. Well, guess what? Newsflash, you should be doing all that stuff anyway, all right? Fiber will make you last, will literally make you live longer if you eat fiber. Probiotics are the good bacteria in your stomach, you cannot live without them. And enzymes, every year after the, about the age 35, you lose more and more and more. You ever hear yourself go through the in and out, uh, you go through the in and out drive through, eat the burger, you're like, oh, in my 20s, this never gave me a problem. It's because you don't have those same enzymes in that stomach to break them down. So you should, I recommend supplementing with fiber supplements, you can do that. Um, supplementing, um, you know, pr probiotics. Um, a good friend of mine who turned me on to the keto giant originally is my buddy Marcus Haley. He turned me on to Bubby's, which is a uh, fermented sauerkraut. It tastes delicious. I look forward to eating it, and it helps me break down all that stuff in my stomach. I rarely run into any constipation. Just in case you guys are wondering, I know you're personally wondering if I am constipated ever, and not really, all right? Because I, <laughs> because I, um, I use enzymes, I use probiotics, and I use fiber in my diet, and it stops really from any of that going on. So if someone's ever told you a keto horror story where they couldn't poop for seven days, that was their fault. That's not gonna be you, because you're gonna use fiber, you're gonna use probiotics, and you should use enzymes, and it's gonna make your health. But you guys, no matter what, if you take nothing from this video, do those three things. No matter what diet you eat, you're gonna be a lot happier. Digestion is the key to your overall health, all right? So, we talked about who does keto, the comparisons to low-carb diets and Atkin diet, and we also gave you some frequently asked questions. Now, me and Joy, we write custom keto diets, all right? It's nothing super special that people do these all the time, but when you have someone holding you accountable, they customize it to the foods that you like and or don't like, and they help you with snags along the way, especially during that, that rough two-week process, you're gonna be more successful. Why start a diet if you're not gonna follow it through? Why to start a diet if you're not gonna be successful? So if you wanna learn more information, if you like a custom keto diet for you, or you and your girlfriend, it's a great thing to do as a pair. It's hard to eat, that, that's a really, it's a really difficult thing to eat differently than your spouse. Um, but if you're ready to pull the trigger and they aren't, let's do it. But I recommend doing it together. If you're more interested, DM one of us. We'll give you some more information about custom keto diets. Let's get you ripped. Let's get you mean. Let's get you lean. And that's it. Thin. All right. We hope you guys enjoyed this nutritional segment. We're going to talk about more stuff in the future. Comment, like, subscribe, share, tell your grandma. Keto time. See you guys next time.